my name is Chen Jiao Jiao, and I work with Peng Yangjun as the team Peng and Chen. Uh, we are story collectors, so today I would like to share with you some stories from our collections. This is a photo of a married couple. It, it has been torn into two parts from the middle. There wasn't any relationship problems. Uh, instead, it was to protect each other from possible implications during the Cultural Revolution. You can see the husband necktie has been cropped out of the photo to prevent being accused of capitalism inclinations. This is an ordinary story of an ordinary Chinese family. And these stories are easily forgotten. They remain only in people's memories and slowly fade away when time goes by. Only part of the history has been selectively documented. As a result, we don't understand very well our nation's history. For that reason, Peng and I decide to collect photos, letters, objects, and stories behind them from ordinary people. We want to discover the unseen part of history from um, these real individuals. Our collection comes out in a box um, with some objects and some old photos and letters. Before the age of digital photography, people took it very seriously of taking photographs. You can see this family, they painted the photo into colors by themselves. The emotion is very strong that it is a better piece of art than most of the uh, modern arts today. Uh, this soldier is from the Korean battlefield. He wrote on the back of the photo, Springtime is very beautiful here in the battlefield. The flowers are blooming then in the flames and the smokes. From these uh, wedding photos from the 1980s, you can see how much people are influenced by the Western bridal systems. These are the intellectual looks <laughs> and the beauties in that time. You can see the moments people share together. Those are the stories from the memories and some stories about the present. Right before the Olympic Games in Beijing, we make um, projects about stories in Beijing. And as you all know, in the last 20, 30 years, there are huge changes and fast changes happen in China that compared to uh, the changes in the West happens in hundreds of years time. There are too many different and irrelevant things are compressed into one space and one time. People's sense of value shifted from one extreme to the other. Uh, it's a very special moment for us to document. This is the girl in the last swimming pool in Beijing. It soon turns into Olympic Museum. It's ironic that we lose a public sports space for a, sport, uh, for a sports museum. And she is a princess in China. She's the last princess in China. Her story starts from a, uh, a member of royal family to our prisoner and to our mo uh, ordinary worker. Her story reflects the modern history of China. This point, he came to Beijing hoping to find a publisher for his poems. He lived in this five square meter tiny room, which cost him only one and a half US dollars per day. And in this uh, giant three gods statue, there's a hotel inside. It is the biggest image building in the world genius records. You see, uh, in the hands of the gods of longevity, there's a peach. There's a room inside for people taking birthday parties. <laughs> this couple, they are very lucky because um, in China, the best legal way to have two kids is to have twins. 
this girl, uh, her uncle is a diplomat. She, uh, he brought her a can of Coca-Cola in the 1980s. At that time, um, uh, the Coca-Cola can has a decoration of Santa Claus for Christmas. For many years, she believed Santa Claus was the president of the United States because only Chairman Mao's head was everywhere in old China. Punk and the Nan, a private luxury club, and one um, people who refused to remove her home. There are more stories to tell. Peng and I will continue as story collectors. We want to document the stories which are easily forgotten. Thank you for your time.